with a round of applause. Join me as we welcome God's choice servant, my father, Apostle Michael Orobo. Many people think they will just be strolling and encounter God and they will keep encountering God. <laughs> Welcome to reality. God is holy. Nobody breaks into his realm just like that. Before you enter his realm, you ascend. And the first thing you break are the elements of this world, the corruption of this world. That's why you come to the altar. I said, if you have an altar against your brother, he said, go back and repent. Go and forgive him. You can't press through with garbage. Every weight you carry, you will drop it. You come there light. You come there empty. And so the power a man must walk into in order to access encounter is the power to break the distractions of this world. You are a TikToker. And you think you will have encounters. After seeing all the naked people, and then you carry that death in your soul. You want to see the, the one that dwells in light without corruption you will labor until you delete that record of death from your soul because garbage can't go there the realm is holy the realm is protected did you not read that the moment man fell god placed a cherub with flaming sword turning on every side he shields that realm if you saw him with sin it's not the one you saw and that's why there are many religions today because they saw many things they thought they saw the god of heaven only the holy can enter there they said thou O lord art of a purer eyes they say your eyes cannot behold iniquity you can't behold iniquity and so the first law of encounter is the law of self-purification that's why i said the standard of the law standard show he said, the Lord knoweth them that are his. He said, they that name it, the name of the Lord, must depart from iniquity. He said, in the great house, there are many vessels. Some is of gold, some of silver, some of wood, and some of hay. He said, it doesn't matter what you are made of. of. He said, if a man purifieth himself, you must pay the price to purge. It's called circumcision in ancient times. And this kind of circumcision, they don't give you a sedative. You are awake and you cut off your false skin. You will feel the pain as you travel, you will feel it. But it's a sign that you seek something that is beyond the star. It's a testimony that you have seen the earth, but you find out that this realm is darkness. There's no light here. You are looking for where the code of your destiny was copied. You know that your destiny is a secret. It's in a scroll. Somewhere in the heavens. And so you will pay the price. Sometimes you will strip yourself of friendship. Sometimes you will cut yourself off every affiliation. What you are doing is that you are purging. So that you can appear before a king that is immortal. You know in those days before a virgin comes into the king. They perfume her with oil. Sometimes for many months, did you not read that before the virgins were brought before the king in the days of Esther, they were perfumed for six months. Ointments so that they can carry fragrances that is consistent with the hallowed realm that they are going into. We are full of garbage. And we come with English language, fascinating the world, fascinating people. We think we can get the attention of spirits by talking. Talking is the lowest level of communication. There is a realm of communication where it's by thought. You don't talk. When you show up, they read your heart. You want to do an immortal business and you come with grammar. Whereas you are full of garbage. In Psalm 24 verse 3, it says, Who shall ascend the hill of God? Who shall stand upon this holy mountain it's a day that are of a killing hands of a pure heart who have not lifted up their soul in vanity nor sworn deceitfully you can't enter those corridors with iniquity and so a man who seeks encounter like the eagle will purge himself you know when an eagle wants to ascend above the skies there are things that eagles do 
one of the things the eagle does is that you know when he wants to mount the wings and the feathers are weak the eagle will painfully use its beak to pull out every feather pull it out pull it out the ones remaining the eagle will dive into the ocean and as he hits the ocean the old feathers will scatter and then new ones come up those new ones are the ones that mount the wings our generation will talk encounters and they will become stories and the sign that a man has seen the God that dwells in light is the authority he comes out with because once upon a time Moses ran away from Pharaoh but the same Moses returned to Pharaoh and said let my people go Pharaoh could not even think of killing him because it's not the boy that ran away that came back the one who came back Exodus 7 verse 1 he said behold I have made you a God unto Pharaoh A man left Pharaoh, but the one who came back was a God. Because he has seen something that mortals don't see. Did you not read that when he saw the bush burning that was not consumed in Exodus 3 from verse 1? The Bible said he wanted to go. They said, Stop. Take off thy sandals. He said, Where you are standing is holy ground. You don't come there with garbage. If you are not purified, you will speak in tongues and be a liar you'll be a swindler and a thief and you may think men will not see but there's a realm where we are surrounded and we are not surrounded with talkers we are surrounded with witnesses and the reason they are called witnesses is because that situation you are going through that you are finding justification for there are a thousand people that went through it and they were holy you said the reason i fell was because I needed food you will find a thousand people that died of hunger they stood their ground the reason I fell was because I wanted to help somebody you'll find a thousand people that helped men and stood their ground and so you will not have any justification the king doesn't even need to judge you the witnesses that are there will prove to you that you have no excuse and so every man who seeks encounter before he calls upon the name of the Lord he will purge himself he will purge himself our generation is full of iniquity and we have substituted spiritual things with charisma that you speak eloquently that you know how to move the crowd does not mean you can move spirits the spirits you are dealing with they are called ancients ancients they were there before the foundations of the world and so before you spoke they knew your heart because they read your heart like a book and they know that you are a liar they know you are a fornicator and they also know you are not willing to repent you are only looking for something to validate you so that you can keep walking in your error this is why churches are increasing pastors are increasing but there's no one to say restore because there's a realm where authority is not about number there's a realm where authority is about stature so when you come and say lift up your head so you get they'll say who is talking we want to know your credibility in the realm of light. Did you not read about Isaiah? He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And the first thing they checked in him was his purity. Without talking to him, he knew. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among a people with unclean lips. And before they engaged him, one of the seraphims took off the coals of fire and touched him and said, today your iniquity has been purged. You can't participate in that realm. The throne room has a government. And the government of the throne room is a government of holiness. And so if a generation truly seeks encounter beyond gathering together as a congregation, holy men must come. That's why I said holy men of God. He said they speak as they were carried. It's only holy men that are carried. If you don't have that signature upon you, you can't be carried. The wind of the spirit will censor you. Only holy men are carried. Today we have talkers, we have motivational speakers trying to take the place of holy men. It doesn't work like that. Paul said, according as it is written, they believe and have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. This thing is a battle. What you seek, somebody walked that path before. And there is a qualification he attained to walk there. Did you not read about Elijah? Nobody could carry his mantle until a man who paid the same price that he paid appeared. And it took more than 800 years for John to show up to carry that mantle of Elijah. Because that credential is a must. The standard of God 
they stand there sure. And so the first law of encounter is the law of purity. When you show, they will excuse your hunger. They will check your garment. If your garment is not pure, they can't allow you. The word immortal means without corruption. And the word holy means to be separate. So for you to come among the immortals, you must be holy. You can't be separated unto him until you are holy. This is why when we teach on sensitive subjects like this, sometimes we give people opportunity to repent. Because our generation is not schooled in the ways of the spirit. People come with charisma. They do all kinds of gesticulation and they think because they are sweating, spirits will be moved. When you wake up, go somewhere and air yourself. Then they sweat dry. Sweat is not a qualification in the realm of God. Hey. 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 <laughs> we are stained. You went to your job, they stained you with iniquity. Some of us, we heard stories. We heard dirty things, dirty. Some of us spoke dirty things. We must be purified. That's why when you start joining, sometimes it takes a long while. You are being washed. They will purge you. They will wash you. So that you are able to stand before the king. Encounters are bought with purity. When a man becomes pure, the spirits begin to draw him. They begin to draw him. And so when you migrate from the law of purity, you now enter the law of bodies. Bodies. Because the reason a spirit that is holy will reveal himself to you is because you have made his will your will you have made his priority your priority when you find a man who is approaching the gate of encounter that man is overwhelmed with the bodies of God the things that trouble the father begins to trouble him now when you are walking in this earth and this cosmos what it tries to do is to make your body become your priority so you'll be carried away by the situations around you even when you go to the altar all you come with are your problems lord hunger lord school fees lord that he will give it to you and he will wave you goodbye if that's all you came for but men who understand the code of encounters they know that when what is in the heart of god becomes what is in your heart then God will show himself to you in addition to your prayer he will show you himself he said call upon me and I will answer and he said beyond answering he said I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of meanwhile the way it works is that if you ask God for bread he will give you but when you seek God himself if he gives you himself bread will be included because he said i have not called the seed of jacob to seek me in vain when you come to him and there is a body in your heart to fulfill what he's looking for he will first of all give himself to you and so if you study exodus chapter 2 from verse 16 the bible said when moses i think verse 11 was come of age because he was a child when he was a child, all he was interested in was his appetite, his bellies, everything he needed. Every time you see certain people kneel down, they are looking for something. Shada, raga, taba. What is happening? I need house rent. The moment house rent comes, they leave. The next time they show up, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the problem? I want to marry. They marry. The next time they come, so, blah, 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 blah. So, what is happening? I need a job. The moment they get it, they go. Those are hirelings. They are users of God. 
God can't commit himself to them. When you tell them about the encounter, it will be strange to them. Because they will never have the privilege of seeing him. They will never have the privilege of knowing him. Because as a father, God is predisposed to answer for your needs. It's his responsibility. But over and above that, he's looking for those who can bear his body. Are you aware that God has a plan for Ghana? Are you aware that God has a plan for Accra? Are you aware that God has a plan for all the mountains of influence? Which one are you participating in? Legislating for it to come to pass. Some of us are not even aware God has a, an agenda for this nation. Some of us are not even aware that God has an agenda for this generation. The reason is because you've not come high enough. Those kinds of news are not public. They are the secrets of God. And only those who God's burdens become their body are able to come that far to be able to hear the whispers of the heart of the Father. And God will tell you that I am tired with the corruption in Ghana. What will you do about it? And you tell the Lord that so long as there is breath on my nose, I will pray until the government is purged. That kind of a man is one hour on the altar will be equal to a century of one who comes for need that's why when we are on the altar don't count time if you count time you are wasting your time somebody else can be on the altar what he presented to God will be more important than what somebody else will come to the altar to do for a lifetime because one man for a lifetime may come to the altar only asking for bread and wine another person the moment his knee goes to the ground is interceding for the nation the moment his knee goes to the ground, he's interceding for the heart of God. Did you not read? When Jesus was born, the Bible said, Simeon was in the temple. And he said, he moved by the spirit when the child came into the temple. Nobody told him. The Holy Ghost himself came to announce to him and to carry him to the temple. He said, that thing you and I were watching for has come. Meanwhile, many others didn't know about Jesus until he died. In fact, they crucified him. The same Jesus that was born without announcement, the Holy Ghost told somebody else that the Messiah has come. And he carried him. He said, now my eyes have seen the salvation of God. Because that's all he was praying for. Other people had the title of Sanhedrin. They didn't know Jesus. So they were religious people. They became mighty in church. That's why that a man is in church does not mean they know him in the spirit. How can you be a member of the Sanhedrin? You are supposed to be an elder. We now discover that an elder in the spirit is not necessarily an elder in church. Because when you are an elder in the spirit, your age is light. But most times when you are an elder in church, your age is time. Even scientists know that there is something called light years. Light years, <laughs> I won't go into science. But believers who were supposed to be rabbis and scholars arrested Jesus and crucified him. How come they didn't recognize him after 33 years? Whereas somebody else recognized him after eight days. This person who recognized him after eight days was not part of the church leadership. But in the spirit, he was a, he was a chronicler. He knew when Jesus was conceived. He knew when Jesus was born. And when Jesus was born, the Holy Ghost had to escort him to the temple and say, the Messiah has come. And while he was celebrating, political leaders didn't know. Because that man had a body. His body was that the Messiah must come. And so when the Messiah came, we discover that Mary was not the only person pregnant. We discover why Mary was pregnant physically, Simeon and Anna were pregnant spiritually. Because they had to bet the child spiritually. And the moment the process was completed, the child came, Jesus was summoned. They had to call all his parents. And so the same way they called his physical parents, that was how they called his spiritual parents. Mary and Joseph thought they were his, two, his only parents. The Holy Ghost said, relax. You were only containers that carried him. 
those who truly bettered him, they travailed in prayer. Because as soon as Zion travails, they bring forth her children. These are the real parents. So the Holy Ghost himself had to invite Simeon and say, your child has come. And when he came, without introduction, he knew exactly who he was. And he carried him up and began to prophesy. Encounters respond to those who bear the burdens of God. Encounters are not a fluke. They are created. And so when a man becomes a candidate of encounters, he begins to prosecute the purposes of God on the altar. When you find that man praying, many times he forgets to pray for himself. He is actually overwhelmed by the burdens of God. Lord, what about Ghana? Lord, what about Accra? Lord, what about this generation? You promised our fathers this is what you will do. Why is the darkness still here? And you find that man praying. Sometimes they look miserable as if their life does not count. You may actually be judging them in the flesh and say these ones are not relevant. But in the spirit, they are the real captains of that generation. Because the sort of the earth is not every believer. The sort of the earth is the believer that is able to bet the purposes of God. Because the reason God called them sort is because they preserve the earth. You are not just walking on the earth without preserving the earth and you call yourself a sort. That's the title. The reality is not with you. And so the second law of encounters is the law of bodies. And you'll be shocked that in a congregation of 5,000 Christians, sometimes only three persons have had encounters. Only three persons. And you are wondering, how come? What kind of Christianity? How come you have been without seeing God? And so all you know about God is the story you were told. You are a motivated person. You are not a believer. Because those who know God, they know him by experience. He said, this is life eternal, that you may know him only through God. How come you are comfortable that all you do is go to church and come back? And then they are looking for you in the register of light. They've never seen you appear. And then you are hoping that one day you will change your generation. No. Commanding your generation is not a gift. It's a trust that is given to those who are spiritually responsible. <laughs> you know, genuine Christianity is lacking. In the days of the fathers, when two people meet and they talk, as they live there, they go into fasting. Because what the other person will tell you, you will lose your sleep. So when we meet, different kinds of fasting begin. 40 days fasting. I fasted, there was a period when I fasted for 5 years. Every day, 6 to 6. I was hearing things that were blowing my mind. What kind of, you mean I will also walk on this same world that Paul the Apostle walked in? Because the brother looked at me and said, bro, is this how we are going to end? Only having the title of Christians? Whereas why Paul was walking the earth, he said, I knew a man, I knew a man many years ago. He was carried to the third heaven. He went to Hades. He said, John went to a place. He heard things. He wanted to write it. They said, don't write it. He said, these ones are not, it's not a news. It's for those who come up. I heard things that made me went mad. He said, Jesus told his 12 disciples, you will sit with me on 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, are we just going to end up with the title of Christ Christians? But when I left that place, a fasting began. I ended it five years later. Because I refused to be normal. I didn't know what to do, but I knew it was a sin to eat every day, to sleep every day, and to drink every day. And as that fasting was going on, the spirit realm opened like a book. And I discovered a man is not yet a Christian until he has taught reality. Because in the realm of God, you are not a Christian by title. You are a Christian because you are a witness. And so if you don't represent anything in the spirit, that thing you are calling yourself is a joke. The spirits can still mess you up. They will tell you, who are you? What do you represent? 
because we are actually called the ecclesia that means we are representatives we are like government officials legislators when we gather like this we are not church members we are citizens and legislators so when we point you we shouldn't know you after your name we should know you after the constituency you represent in the spirit because when believers gather they are actually representing constituencies so you meet certain people they are representing light when they talk you will hear mysteries and oracles that you have never known and they are not just saying hello things the moment they say the witness comes to the earth when you meet some people they represent the balm in gilead anything they touch is healed when you meet other people they are carrying the lamp of intercession when they pray territory is open that's how we are supposed to gather we are supposed to gather as legislators but the problem is only few have had encounters and so we have members in thousands but the legislators are few because few have ascended so many others are on earth when you go to the house of assembly nobody there is a member everybody there is a rep representing a constituency when you come to church you are not supposed to be a member you are supposed to be a rep representing a constituency that's why Paul henceforth know we no man after the flesh but it will take pregnancy of bodies to be able to come into that order and you see when a woman is pregnant there's a way she lives you don't find a pregnant woman going for olympics you don't find a pregnant woman as a football fan at nine months he's jumping a go no that body is too heavy to be a fan even if she loves olympics the body will narrow her path you don't find a pregnant woman drinking alcohol and say ah i love this drink no the child she's carrying will affect her menu and so when a man is pregnant with bodies it's not just prayer bodies provoke consecrations your path will become narrow and it's on that narrow path that you will collide with the spirit that is eternal when you find believers who are into everything you ask them they say is it a sin no it's not a sin that's why you are hurt remain there when you become pregnant that pregnancy will restrict you many times you will wake up because you are burdened every weekend you'll not be permitted to go out of your house it's not a law it's a body sometimes because you are pregnant you will be forced to off your phone for months it's not a law it's a body many times because you are pregnant you will have to cut off friendship there's nothing wrong with having friends but you your path is narrow you have a body that body will shape you and even after you have an encounter you will, you can't change it it will become your culture that's why when you find men who are truly spiritual men they have cultures they have culture you can't find a man who is a spiritual man who has no culture there are some you find every year they have periodic fasting that's why today you are doing 70 days fast it's a culture of a spiritual man his path is narrow in my country everybody wants the mantle of babadola meanwhile this babadola fasts 40 days dry every year if you don't have a body and you try it after the 15th day you have ulcer after the 20th day you will die because if you have a body the higher you go you will now begin to feed from other substance that is not earthly because a body can become water a body can become food sometimes when you have a body you will lie down for seven days you will not even know it's seven days you are feeding from that body but for you to get there you would have consecrated your spirit until nothing that is earthly is able to get your attention when you get to that pathway of narrow way you begin to see things that are not natural encounters will become your habitation but the problem with our world is that we don't have consecrated men and the reason we don't have consecrated men is because we don't have men that have bodies everybody is barren talking like an empty drum and we want to substitute 
spiritual things with show and charade. When you are done with charisma, come back to the doorway of life and let them teach you the way of the spirit. He said, I beat my body. I bring it under subjection. I beat my body. There is something I'm pregnant with and because I'm pregnant with that thing, I can't talk like everybody. I can't do like everybody. It's not a sin, but for me, it's a sin. Because if I continue like that, my soul will become divergent. I can't trap light. And so a man who seeks encounters is a man who carries his body like a child. He will tend it. He will manage it. He will guide it. And as he's tending that body, a point will come, the, the light bearer will appear to him. And say, now you can carry her out hands. This is a generation of football. Football is our religion. This is a generation of pleasure. This is a generation of show. We do everything that negates spiritual life. And we want to carry powers that the ancients carried. It will be fraud if that power is given to you. It will be fraud. Do you know what Elijah did? Do you know what Moses did? Do you know what the patriarchs of old did? You read a verse of scripture because you are excited. You now say you have the mantle of Elijah. Do you have the consecrations of Elijah? Do you have the bodies of Elijah? That's why a generation is deceiving herself. And may God help us for the fathers not to go. All these fathers we are insulting. May God help us for them not to go. If they go and we are like this, we'll be naked. <laughs> you stand up. You are attacking and accusing somebody that has stood for 30 years fasting for the nation. And there's not one among us who has maintained fasting for three years. If that man leaves, the white beast will enter the nation. God will keep them until they are, they are 90 years. God will still keep them. Because we are not qualified to man the gates that they mount. This is not English. This is guardianship in the realm of the spirit. The second law of encounter, the law of body. The third law of encounter is the law of seeking and seeking with the whole of your heart. There's a difference between burdens and seeking. Burden is when the will of God overwhelms you and you are living for the will of God. But seeking is where when you are in love with God, you are intimate with God and all you are interested in is relationship. In Jeremiah 29 verse 13, he said, you shall seek me and you shall find me when you seek me with the whole of your heart. See, there are many things I will share with us tomorrow. But since I discovered there are many pastors here today, I just want to slow it down a bit and pick out some of these things. Maybe tomorrow night when we have a larger congregation, we can do more administration. Because it seems the announcement was such that pastors I mean I almost saw this number in the afternoon for pastors so lots of ministers are here many people don't love God anymore they love ministry many people don't love God anymore they love honor many people don't love God anymore they love the show of relating with people who matter and so a conference like this some people will come it's all about taking a picture so that when they take that picture it will create impression their level and their ranking <laughs> many people are interested in show excellence and elegance you have not labored to win hundred souls. 
but there's a way you want to walk into the auditorium with protocols three people by the right three people by the left and you are walking in like a humble man you are not a humble man you are a proud man and you are a manipulator because the honor you are looking for you don't qualify for it you see the whole church is 30 people a man of God will reduce camera to capture three rows and then he stands in front he's walking like this he doesn't know the labor of evangelism he doesn't know the labor of prayer he has no relationship with God when he wants to go to preach he shuffles messages and when he finishes shuffling messages he will come and be shouting as if what he's saying is from his heart it's a lie his voice is loud he's just taking advantage of a loud voice that man has no relationship with God and you see the danger is that a man that loves not the Lord the Bible said he is anathema maranatha you know the, the body of Christ preaches maranatha there's nothing like maranatha in scripture the word is anathema maranatha anathema means a cost maranatha means waiting for the coming of the Lord so the actual phrase is that if you don't love God, you are accost. And in that accost state, God will keep you waiting for his return. And so if we pick only Jesus' return and we separate accost and lovelessness, then we are deceiving people. And so Maranatha has a compulsory attachment of those who are accost if they don't love God. If all we do is ministry, then we'll become thieves very soon. Because after a short while, it will become a, a charade. It will become a show. It will become a manipulation. And we will put a lot of intelligence and pressure to create impression. But God will not show up to validate a lie. And so God is looking for those who are seekers. God is looking for those who love him. Who are passionate about him. Those are the ministers of God. God is not looking for another intelligent preacher. There are many graduates of theology. There are certain schools where they graduate 100,000 theologians every year. He's looking for witnesses. How far have you journeyed in intimacy? The Bible said, as the deer panted after the waters. He says, so my soul longeth after thee. In a dry and testy land where no water is. In a dry and testy land. Is giving reference to the deer. The deer can perceive the smell of water from 200 miles away. And when a deer is approaching water, you can hear the panting. <sighs> He's just looking for that taste. And many times, even if a deer knows that the water is infested with crocodiles, a deer will still go for the water. He can put his life in jeopardy just to have a taste. That's what intimacy is about. That a man pursues God to a point where even if he has to die for it, he's willing to. When God finds such men, God is in a rush to reveal himself to such men. The Christianity of the elders, the Christianity of the fathers, is different from ours in the days of the fathers ministry broke out of intimacy ministry is not an organization it's an organism as they work with God you'll find somebody pray pray after praying for for 30 days for 60 days for one year for two years things begin to happen and people begin to join him and they are just praying as they are praying is growing as their praying is growing today people don't start ministry organically they are looking for structure they draw the structure draw the blueprint and write scholastic document and after after one year you hear fornication you hear lying you hear gossip you hear manipulation and so in one house you have a thousand form of iniquity because that thing did not come from the womb of God. And because it is not born from intimacy, that thing you call a ministry is a bastard. 
Because God did not have intercourse with you. And so what came out of that relationship is not an offspring of God. And so God looks at it. It looks like ministry. But it's a platform for the devil. And at the end of the day, demons will have harvest. Much more than what you call a ministry. Because when you come to such ministry and censor it, in four years, 35 virgins would have been disflowered. You will find witchcraft, all kinds of witchcraft there. Because God is not there. It's not God that betted it. It is a product of your intercourse and your ambition. And so it is your ambition that gives rise to that, that alien. Because aliens are born through perversion. He said the sons of God had intercourse with the women, the daughters of the sons of men. Aliens were born. So if God is not the one that entered into intimacy with you, what is born is not ministry. That thing is an alien. And after a while, the devil will masquerade through it. And so the way God encounters men is to find men that are in love with him. These are not preachers. These are not theologians. This one didn't come from a Bible school. They are just seeking God every day. It's the early in the morning, in the cool of the day, he went to a solitary place. There he prayed. He went to a quiet place and he talked to God. He mingled with God. And as he kept praying, the energy he was creating was drawing men. He was drawing men. He was creating something from the intimacy quarters. It was not a scholastic staging of a systemic structure. It was intimacy producing offsprings. Offsprings that resemble God. And so if we seek encounters, intimacy must be restored. Intimacy. If we ask you genuinely, do you love God? Prayer is a body. Because for us, prayer is a register that we feel every day. And so we struggle to pray in tongues. When we are done praying that tongues for two hours, we say we have marked today's register. Even your wife, if you call her for the purpose of calling, she will hate you. Because nobody is interested in marking register. Honey, how are you? Hope you are fine. Have you eaten? Are the children okay? Thank you very much. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. They will look at you. Were you forced to call me? Because there's no relationship. That's what many people do. They just want to mark the register. But God is looking for lovers. Because when you come before your lover, sometimes you are not talking. You are just there. His, his presence is like a fragrance. Like a fragrance. And you are just perceiving his breath. You are just sensing his touch. And you are just there. And sometimes you are there for the whole day. You are overwhelmed by that presence. And he he just whispers to you and you are full of joy and that joy you can run with it for one week you are not talking reading bible so that you can say i read 10 chapters every day sometimes you open one verse and that one verse becomes a discussion and he begins to touch your heart touch your heart and you sit on that verse sometimes you are crying sometimes you are weeping and you are weeping and you are weeping and it's just one verse of scripture because he's come alive intimacy has come alive and as he's talking to you he's like that scripture is for you alone they they altered it for you before the foundation of the world he said with an everlasting love have i loved you ah ah he loves you that much and that testimony of love becomes a personal statement it's not a scripture you are reading to quote. You have caught the, the whisper of your lover. Just the same way you look at your wife and you say, I love you. That I love you can resonate in her so deep. Sometimes you tell your wife, I love you. She will go to the kitchen and cook the best meal. Serve you with all her heart. And throughout the day, she's smiling. She's just smiling. What did they say is I love you? Uh, why is I love you so important? Because that one is not a phrase. You are communicating your heart to her heart. 
is intimacy. And so what God wants to share with every believer is intimacy. It looks weak because we have reduced Christianity to theology. And so you can't find lovers anymore. He said, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. The passion was so intense. Sometimes Jesus will be in a crusade. After the first day, miracles everywhere. The whole city gather. He will sneak out and leave the crusade and go to the mountain. I thought when the crusade has hit the crescendo, that's the time to shine. No, he doesn't shine among men. He shines among angels. Do you know what it means when the whole city gathers? In our current generation, people fight if you don't give them opportunity to minister in the conference. In fact, a choir member can keep madness with you for five years. Because after she made her hair and bought a new shoe to minister in that conference, you stopped her from ministry. And so even if an angel comes down and stands on the altar like this, that lady will be angry. Because she doesn't care whether God visits. All she's interested in is that she must be the one to minister so that she will cut a clip and put on YouTube. There are no lovers. People who love him. But when you find lovers, a man could come, he's the one to preach. But while the person was singing, God took over. Everybody shuts down. Because what we are looking for is the presence of God. Not a, a program. Not church order. It's not order. It's not service order. We are looking for the spirit of God. He has entered. Everything stops. And everybody is there mingling and interacting with him. And when we are done with that service, everybody will be full of joy. Because they've touched him. And at that point, it doesn't matter who preached. It doesn't matter who prayed. It doesn't matter who sang. We've touched the glory. We've touched him. That's what matters. Everyone has interacted with that excellent spirit. When God finds the people like that, he is at liberty to give himself to them. Because he is looking for seekers. This is what the elders knew. They knew. They knew. Many times, the Bible said Moses will come to the backside of the desert. Even to Horeb, the mountain of God. For 40 years, when the man is done feeding the sheep, he goes back just in case something will happen. That's why the moment the bush was burning, he picked it, he knew. Because he was searching for God. He was looking for God. And the moment God came, he stopped there. That became the definition of his existence. Most of us are in love with fame. We are in love with glory. We are in love with honor. We are in love with power. But we don't know God. And so we can carry the Bible and sleep on it. It doesn't matter. So long as we can come to church with a good suit and shout hallelujah. So long as we can come to church and we say something and it goes viral. And that's why today many are not speaking to their generation. They are teaching what is popular and what is acceptable. But what is acceptable may not be your message. And so may God deliver us from the love of ministry and teach us the love of the Father. This is what makes God give himself to men. Because not many men are worthy. The Bible says who is worthy to open the seals and to lose the scrolls. Who is worthy? There are certain things that are committed to those who are worthy. And there are many who are not worthy. Intelligent, scholarly, but godless. A man can no longer sit on scripture and search and seek God. Number four, which is the last thing I'll touch tonight, is the law of honor. If you can't honor men, you can't honor God. And so many times, when God wants to entrust you with encounters, He brings men your way. Because men are systems. Men represent dimensions. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 15 to 17, Jesus was speaking. He came to John. This is the Son of God. This is the Creator. In John chapter 1 from verse 1, the Bible said, In the beginning was the Word. He said the Word was with God and the Word was God. 
He said the same was with, with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. Four things. Number one, he was creator. Number two, he was God. Number three, he was life. And number four, he was light. The fullest credential you could find in one man was captured in that scripture. But he walked under a closed heaven for 30 years until he came to John the Baptist in Matthew 3 and he said to be baptized of him. And John said, no, I should be baptized of you. He said, suffer it to be so for now. He said, thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And the moment John baptized him, his heaven opened. Immediately. Why did his 30 years of prayer not open the heavens? Many times you find an arrogant generation. They tell you, me too, I can pray and seek God. Yes, you can. But what should take you one year will take you 30 years. 30 years of labor in prayer. The heavens were locked. But the moment it came under John the Baptist, the heavens opened and God spoke from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What do you mean, sir? Did you not love him for the past 30 years? Is he not your beloved son for the past 30 years? Why would he suddenly receive a national validation just because he went to another prophet? Because God will check your heart towards him by judging your heart towards men. If you cannot honor the authorities that God has instituted, you cannot honor God. There is a rebellious generation rising full of arrogance, insolence that defies the powers and the authorities that be. But the Bible teaching us in Jude chapter 1, he said, even Michael the archangel, he said, he did not bring railing accusation against the devil. He said, the Lord rebuke you. In the realm of God, they honor dignities. We are not the same. There are many things you will not step into until you honor, the, or honor people who carry it. Because God is not a waster. He transfers heritage from one generation to another. And so many times, you will qualify for something through prayer. You will qualify for something through seeking. But God will check whether you are honorable enough to handle it. And so he will see how you honor another man who is in honor. Because it takes a man who is in honor to honor others. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, God had prepared Saul to be king. But he will never be one until he meets Samuel. And the moment he came to Samuel, Samuel looked at him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you as king? Is it not because the Lord has anointed you? He said, Now, as you depart from me, the man began to change his destiny by talking. He said, As you depart from me, you will find two men. They will carry three loaves and wine and oil. He said, They will salute you and they will give you my God. Are you commanding those men? Who are you? He's a custodian. He said, when you depart from them, as you are approach the sepulchre of Rachel, you will find a band of prophets. He said, dear, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. You will be changed into another man. Even if you speak and men do it, are you also going to speak and the spirit of God will obey? But when a custodian is talking, he said, I, the Lord, I confirm the words of my servant. I perform the counsels of my messengers. And so Samuel made Saul a king by talking. If Saul didn't meet Samuel, he will struggle for a lifetime. He will not be king. There are certain encounters that are tied to your interaction with men. If they are moved because of honor and they speak over you, they will open a door over your life that will change your story for the next 30 years. I tell you why many people are praying and fasting. And yet go nowhere they are high-minded and so it's a risk to empower a proud man it's a danger to empower a man who cannot honor authority because when he gets into authority he will represent tyranny a man who cannot submit under authority can never come into authority and if you are not an excellency there are certain encounters you'll never have because one of the things encounters come to do is to bring you into authority Why is this important? Because our generation 
is at the verge of either receiving an inheritance or losing it. God is called the ancient of days. He never grows old. God can fold his hand and a generation will pass. It won't affect him. It is our own privilege to be used of God. A generation. There was 400 years of darkness between Malachi and John the Baptist. That is four generations. God did nothing. He kept quiet. There were intercessors. There were prophets. But nobody could receive the counsel of God. And 100 years passed. 200 years passed. 300 years passed. 400 years passed. He didn't change anything. When God was satisfied, he began to encounter men again. So we are at the verge of either stepping into encounters that will awaken ordinations and step into the heritage of God or to lose it. And whether we will enter or not is dependent on some of these laws amongst many others. We have learned the way of rebellion from the world system. We have learned distraction from the world system. And so many can no longer encounter God. And so all we have are stories. No matter the story you are told, stories don't give you authority. Only encounters bring you into authority. When you receive encounters, two things happen. I'm about to round up. when you receive encounters many things happen but i pick out two for you number one eternal relevance is conferred only to those who encounter god it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what men call you. Just have an encounter. Your story can change overnight. In the time of the emergence of the Christ, three people had prominent encounters. The first was a priest. The second was a widow. The third was a child. Three of them became relevant. It didn't matter their status in society. Anna was a widow. A prophetess of God. The Bible says she lost her husband at a tender age. But she had an encounter. And because of that encounter she had, the reproach of, a, of widowhood rolled away from her. The woman gained so much stature in the spirit that she was categorized among prophets. And then John the Baptist was a little boy. But suddenly, because of encounter, he became older than the ancients. He said, the one that appeared to me, the one that sent me, he said, the same said unto me, upon whom you see the Spirit of God descend as a dove, he is the Messiah. And the things John was uttering, there was nobody in his generation that was uttering it. In fact, when Jesus showed up, he said, of all men born of a woman, he said, there is none greater than John. Of all men born of a woman. So in the dispensation before Christ, John, even though a young man, became the most relevant. Do you know how many Sanhedrin, how many elders, how many scholars, how many theologians were in that generation? All it took John to become relevant was an encounter. And John became so relevant that Jesus himself we need John to validate his calling. Because the reason Jesus went to John was not just because he was a prophet. Because at one point they came to him and said, what sign do you show us that you are called of God? That you are the Messiah? And he asked them a question. Is John a prophet? If you claim John is a prophet, then John is the one that validated me. How can a man become so relevant that he validates God to a generation? It's an encounter. Because there are certain men that if they say, this is the word of the Lord, you have no choice but to obey it. If you doubt it, you will see it. Elijah, Elijah sold up. There was economic famine. The nation was crumbling, and women were eating their children. Elisha stood up and said, by this time tomorrow, he said, a cup of barley will be sold for one shekel. The prime minister looked at him and said, even if they open the window of heaven, it will not happen. He said, they don't need to open the window of heaven. I am the window of heaven. I have gone there 
I am the window of heaven. And he told him, I respect you. You are the prime minister. I know you are in government. I know you sit next to the king. But hear this. You will see it, but you will not enjoy it. And a prime minister of a nation was shut down. Do you know how many economic intelligence is needed to change the economy of a, of a nation? Ask your government now what they are going through to raise the value of the cities. And then a man of encounter shows up and says, don't worry. By this time tomorrow, one city shall become five dollars. And then you look at him, you say, how is that possible? Are you going to revamp the Bank of Ghana? I don't need the Bank of Ghana. I am speaking as I'm commanded. Because when a man has an encounter, he can tell dry bones arise. And dry bones can be turned to an army. Nothing, hear this. Nothing confers relevance like encounter. That's why every man must press for encounters. How can a prophet without economic scholars, without economic structure, without economic plan, and it's not like he was praying. A messenger just came to him and said, the king is in need of you. He said, go and tell the king. My God, what power is that? Go and tell the king. That means through encounter, a man can become more relevant than the king because the true king is not the one on the physical throne. The true king is, is the one on the spiritual throne. And so you don't need a name. You don't need a title. Receive an encounter. When you tell the government of your nation, hear the word of the Lord. In seven days, the dollar will move from 16 cities to five cities and it happens. The president will look for your house. That is what Christianity is about. He said the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder. We carry the nations on our shoulders. But what gives us the power to do so are the kind of encounters that we have. Did you not read in the day of Daniel? The king went to take the holy chalice. He went to defy the tabernacle of God. He had no fear. It doesn't matter how many priests there are. It matters if one man has encounter. And when he carried the chalice, the Bible says suddenly a, a hand appeared and wrote on the wall. And they brought all the wise men of Babylon. Nobody could answer. The king was jittery. And the queen came to her, to him, and said, There's a man in thy kingdom in whom is the secret of the holy gods. This is not a preacher. This is not a theologian. This is not a student of Bible school. There is a man in thy kingdom that time has come when they will know us as that man in the kingdom he said light and understanding is in this man excellent spirit is upon him and he has the power to explain hard sentences and the king in his helpless and vulnerable state began to look for those who have encounters you know once upon a time when the king has a dream daniel will need to go and pray but the point came, he grew in this corridor. So he doesn't need prayer anymore. If you call him at any time, he shows up. And when he came to the king, he looked at him and said, Oh king, he said, God honored you by giving you the throne of your father. He said, but you have defied the living God by worshiping the God of stone, the God of iron and the God of sand. He said, therefore, is this hand come? Mene, mene. The first thing is that, how did he understand that language? Because until he came, nobody could read it. Because that's not the language of men. That's the language of angels. The man was living in another ecosystem. He dwelt in another reality. Mene, mene. He said, take care of our sin. After reading it, they were still ignorant. Because there is a knowledge you cannot have, even if you go to Harvard. There's a knowledge that is in the scrolls of eternity. The power to rule a nation is not with Harvard, it's with Zion. He said, behold, you have been weighed on the balances. That was the first time we knew that there is a scale in the spirit where they weigh men. Because your weight on earth may be 80 kg. In the spirit, your, age, your weight may be 1 kg. And so actual weight is not measured in time. It's measured by your accuracy in the spirit. He said, you have been weighed in the balances. And you have been found wanting. He said, therefore, tonight... Ah, 
I love the way this man changed things in 24 hours. One said the whole economy will change in 24 hours. Another one said tonight, the strongest government in the world. He said you will be overthrown. And as if it was a joke, that night the king fell because one man came from another realm. One man came from another height. How can demons torment your family? How can your nation be in darkness? The problem is not with the government. We are the men of encounters. Where is that man that can call the minister of defense and tell him by 2 p.m. on Thursday, there will be an attack in the National Assembly. Do this, do this, do this. The army, we have no inclination, but there's somebody who guards over the city in the spirit. Did you not read when Paul was entering Damascus? Jesus appeared to him and said, you can't enter the city. There's a gatekeeper called Ananias. Until he permits you, you can't enter. And so the defense system of a nation is not the army, it's the prophets. In my country today, they discovered some explosive and the whole honor was shifted to the American soldier. And the first thing I asked myself is, are Americans now the hope of Nigeria? Because when you don't have spiritual technocrats, you will depend on outsiders who exploit you for your deliverance. And they are not here to help you. They are there to show you how useless you are. But when prophets rise, the dignity of a nation is restored. Mene! Mene! Death will not leave that family until a man of encounter arises. The nation will be in darkness until a man of encounter arises. And this is why we contend for encounter. Because true relevance is in the spirit. You think by quoting scriptures, you can take over a nation. No. There are spirits who sit there as gatekeepers. And when you show up, they want to find out where are you speaking from. And when you come, you will say, I do not come with bow and arrow. But I come to you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, whose army you have defied and Goliath with four. Most of you, you are still seeing your disadvantage. Come up, Hida. There's a mantle on your life. There's a garment on your life. The great men were not advantageous in the flesh. They found themselves in the spirit. Because on the ear of David is the armor of many warriors. There are many armors in the spirit, but who can ascend the mountains of God? There's an encounter waiting for you, but you have not built up in the spirit. How can 30 million people be confused? It's not possible. No matter how bad it is, at least 10 people should see light. And be able to tell the nation, this is the way to go. And when they speak, their words become law. Because these ones, they are relevant. Not just among men, but among spirits. The Bible spoke concerning Moses and Elijah. After they died, in fact, Elijah didn't die. And even Moses could not die. God had to kill him. Because there's a place you'll get to that death will be swallowed up in victory. And so Moses was 120 years old. His eyes were not abated. He was as strong as a young man. God had to show up and take Moses to a hiding place to kill him. Because the man had mingled with immortality too much for him to be able to die. So God himself had to kill him. He said, go to the mountain of Barin, In the mountains of Nebo. There, die. Because if we are waiting for age and sickness, you will never die. And so I have to create a method of killing you. You have walked in light too much to die. God had to kill him. And when it came for Elijah, Elijah knew the ways, the navigatory part of the spirit so much that he knew that he couldn't die. And he also knew the day he will live. And he did not just know the day, he knew the spot where he will live. And so he was manipulating Elijah. He entered the city. He said, wait for me here. He said, as surely as the Lord liveth, I will not leave you today. And suddenly, the same thing God did for four million people by parting the river. One man came casually, not because he was escaping from Egypt. He struck the water with his mantle. The water parted. 
You know what that means? In the eyes of God, one man can be superior to four million. And when the water parted, Elijah came to the spot. He knew. He said, what do you want? What a way to live. What do you mean? What do you want? Because like Paul, he knew his assignment was over. Paul said, I've run my race. I've finished my course. I checked the blueprint. There's nothing written anymore. I've come to the last full stop. I read my own biography in the spirit. This is the end. He said, there remained for me a crown of life. He didn't just know the end. He knew the reward. Why are you, you are hoping that God will give you a reward? Another person is defining his own reward. In Zion, I'm a king. I have a crown of life. And Elijah came there. And he said, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion. He said, you have asked for a, a, a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taken, taken where? What do you mean taken? Taken to where? By what? But that's a man who dwells in another civilization talking. And while he was yet speaking, the Bible said a chariot of fire ran in between them and the whirlwind carried him. He knew where he would be carried from. Those are men of encounter. And the point I'm making is they were so relevant that even after death and after they were carried from earth, God had to prophesy that Elijah will come again. The world will still need him. So there are men who don't live one lifetime. There are men who live many lifetimes. Because if they don't come back, there will be a gap in the earth. And so Elijah will have to come again. And so when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible said Elijah and Moses stood with him. And they were telling Jesus what he will do in Jerusalem. So men will tell God what he should do. <laughs> Jesus came. The Bible said John went in the spirit of Elijah. It will take Elijah to open the door for God to come to earth. And even when God came to earth, it will take Elijah to tell him what he will do in Jerusalem. And it's not yet finished. He said two witnesses will come again. Because there is the everlasting gospel that will be preached at the end of time. That means only Elijah came to the world four times. He came as the first Elijah. He came in John the Baptist. He came on the Mount of Transfiguration and he will still come as the two witnesses. What kind of relevance is that? A man, the Bible said, it is appointed unto man to die once. Then there will be judgment. Who is Elijah? Because Elijah did not die and he didn't come to the earth once. At least we know that Elijah came four times. He walked on earth as Elijah. He came as John. He came on transfiguration and he will come as the two witnesses. Is Elijah not a man? I thought men die once, then judgment. Who is Elijah? It's a man of encounters. Because when Elijah, eternal relevance is conferred on those who have encounters. That means when you are not pressing for encounters, your life will be shallow. Aliyah! <laughs> Our world is mundane. Find out how we brag. I have a PhD from Harvard. And so what? What does Harvard PhD give you? A better job opportunity. That's the best it gives to you. Is it not men that taught you? There are those who are taught by the elders of heaven. John said, I heard a voice. In Revelation 4 1, come up hither. When he came up, he said, I saw a book open. And he said, One of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Why you are bragging with godless lecturers from Harvard? Some men are taught by elders in Zion. We don't know what to brag with. I have a doctorate degree. I've lived in the United Kingdom. I've lived in, 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 in Tosla. That's somebody's village. But we brag with mundane things. You landed Dubai. All you thought of were selfies. So that men will know that you have gone to Dubai. What a wasted, a wasted life. Meanwhile, there's a man called William Maron Branham. On one occasion, he stood and heaven appeared on his head. As a testament that this is a servant of God. I heard that in the Azusa Street Revival, 
Sometimes while they are praying, fire will descend on the building. And people will see it literally. Why men are inviting Zion to earth? You are bragging that you went to Dubai. Because we are mundane. Where is the hunger for eternal things? Paul said if we are risen with Christ, then our affection must be on the things that are above. And so my value does not increase because I entered the borders of the United Kingdom. The Bible spoke about 70 men that Jesus sent out. He said demons were subject to them and they celebrated and he said rejoice not. He said for today your name has been written in the book of life. You have become citizens of Zion. So long as the sun remained, Israel won. And he has never read it in the book. He has never heard anybody do it before. But he has gone to where it is regulated from. And suddenly the Bible said, in the eyes of everyone, Joshua said, let the sun remain in the case to go down. God, hacking to the voice of a man. I was told, the reason we have a leap here is because Joshua interfered with the oxygenatory system of the sun. And so every year you find a leap year is a testimony that a man called Joshua existed. So why men walk on earth? They become immortals. I read about a man called Noah. He said Noah erected an altar to the Lord and he, 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 he sacrificed upon it clean beast spoke in his own heart and said so long as i live i will no longer destroy the earth by flood and he said as a sign god allowed a rainbow on the face of the earth and so every time you see the rainbow it's a sign that a man called noah walked on the earth so men through encounters left their signature on earth whereas we are young ministers what we are pursuing is honorarium what we are pursuing is popularity does no one need publicity? Every time you read the rainbow, you will remember that there's a man called Noah. Every time there is a leap year, you will remember there's a man called Joshua. That is immortality. That there's a place a man can get to in the realm of God. That he will leave a signature on the earth that can never be erased. So long as the earth remains, those men have become immortals. And so relevance is not about the size of your church. Relevance is not about those who sing your name. Who are you in the spirit? Are you popular? Hey, 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 hey. In First Samuel chapter 7 verse 12, it said the army of the Midianites were oppressing Israel. And it said Samuel took a stone how did he know? Who teach these men? Who, who are their teachers? How do they know these things? He said he set up the stone and poured oil on it and called a stone Ebenezer. A man baptized the stone, called the stone a name. And the Bible said from that day, he said the hand of God, the land that the Philistines took, Israel he claimed it he said number two God was against them all the days of Samuel's life and number three the Philistine no longer came against Israel one man became an army how did he know 
That means the things that constitute our advantage, they are not earthly. All our pursuit in the flesh is a distraction to our destiny. Men who have understanding, they contend for encounters. We give ourselves bogus titles, prophet, apostle, governor, evangelist, pastor, elder, teacher. But we cannot move things in the heavens. And every day we keep quoting men that have come to rest. Whereas the challenges of our generation is awakening us to responsibility. I speak over somebody. The hunger and the passion required to ministry is not a put an early description. Imagine the way widows were known. He said, widows receive their dead back to life. Women were powerful in the realm of God that they received their dead back to life. And it became normal that they generalized it. In our world today, you can count those who raised the dead. But this is a generation where it was a normal thing among women to raise the dead. What did they know? What was the hunger in their spirit? What defined their pursuit? We have stories. And so you didn't come here for a message. You came here provoked for an encounter. In the next two minutes, the fire of God will fall here. And so I want to give you the opportunity to pray in tongues as desperate as you can ever pray for the next one minute. <laughs> remembered as a prophet don't plan to be remembered as a governor they don't remember men like that 
time? Is it time we fail me? To speak of Gideon. To speak of Barak. To speak of Jephthah. Of Samuel. Of David and the prophets. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. Obtained righteousness. Shut the mouth of lions. Quench the violence of fire. He a weak men were made valiant in strength and they put to flight the armies of the aliens. Men are remembered by the dimensions they represent. They are not remembered by titles. The archbishop will not be remembered as a bishop. He will be remembered as a man of prayer. Because he hosts that dimension. He represents it. Reverend Eastwood and Abba will be known as a holy man that feared God. They don't know men after titles. Make no mistake. Prophet Aginasari will be remembered as a man of signs and wonders who carried the voice of God. We don't know men after titles. We know men after dimensions. You think Prophet Nana will be remembered as a prophet? He's a man of prayer and fasting. Who carries the presence of God and the voice of God. They don't remember men after titles. But it will take encounter for you to represent the dimension. In my country, we know our fathers. When you call WF Kumuye, you are speaking holiness. When you call Bishop David Oedeku, you are speaking faith. When you call Iya Deboye, you are speaking brokenness. Humility and authority. When you call Chris, you are killing me. You are calling wonders. When you call Dr. Paul and Nature, you are calling fire. People are known by dimensions. But it will take encounters. Don't be a titled man or a preacher. Press for an encounter. Can you pray in another one minute? Hey, uh. greatly blessed by this powerful message please don't forget to subscribe like and share this video if you have any question or any comment whatever that is brought to you and you need an answer to please use the comment box below thank you and god bless you i will see you in the next video